a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Today I have set before you life and prosperity, death and doom. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I enjoin on you today, loving and walking in his ways, and keeping his commandments, statutes, and decrees, you will live and grow numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to occupy. If, however, you turn away your hearts and will not listen, but are led astray and adore and serve other gods, I tell you now that you will certainly perish. You will not have a long life on the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and occupy. I call heaven and earth today to witness against you. I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Choose life then, that you and your descendants may live by loving the Lord your God, heeding his voice and holding fast to him. For that will mean life for you, a long life for you to live on the land that the Lord swore he would give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed a man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in a way of sinners, nor sits in a company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord, and meditates on his law day and night. He is like a tree planted near running water, that yields its fruit in due season, and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff, which the wind drives away. But the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Blessed are they who Dominus Hobiscum, et Spiritus Tuo, Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Luca, Jesus said to his disciples, The Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then he said to all, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. What profit is there for one to gain the whole world, yet lose or forfeit himself? Bebum Domini.
If you were paying close attention to the readings today, you may have noticed a seemingly glaring contradiction between them. In the book of Deuteronomy, Moses tells the people of Israel that if they love the Lord God, walk in his ways, and keep his commandments, they will enjoy long life in the land that they are entering to occupy. But in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus says to those who wish to come after him <clears throat> that uh, they must deny themselves, take up their crosses, and follow him. And whoever wishes to save his life must lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. On the one hand, Moses is promising long life to those who follow the Lord God. On the other hand, Jesus calls upon those who follow him to carry the cross and to lose their lives. Well, how can we account for this paradox in scripture? How could we follow the Lord God and have long life and lose our lives at the same time? You know, Jesus was entirely faithful to God the Father and kept the commandments perfectly, yet he suffered death at the hands of his enemies. If those who are faithful to God are supposed to have long life, why is the most holy one, Jesus Christ, put to death? How can we reconcile this apparent contradiction? Well, the answer, quite simply, is that both readings are true. Those who keep God's commandments do indeed enjoy long life, while those who deny themselves, take up their crosses, and lose their lives for the sake of Christ, likewise save their lives. The readings from Deuteronomy and Luke are not actually contradictory. Those who keep God's commandments and those who seek to live in peace with God and with their neighbor they are, not, they are concerned not only with providing their own needs and the needs of their families, but they also show concern for the poor and the needy and provide according to their means. They seek peaceful means to rectify injustices so that the legitimate needs of all can be satisfied. They are not inordinately attached to worldly pleasures and goods, and they are always willing to lend to lend to those who ask for help. They have respect for the dignity of every human person from conception to natural death, and they seek the attainment of the common good of all. They do not exploit others for profits or reduce them to slavery. When the majority of people seek to do God's will and to obey God's commandments, this brings about a just and peaceful society in which everyone can thrive and flourish. Unfortunately, the reality of original sin continues to haunt us. There are still too many of us who are attached to our own egos and our pride, our own selfish ambitions, our own quest for power, our own distorted ideas and ideologies, our own material possessions, and our own pleasures. We erect gods of our own making, whether those gods be ourselves or other people, celebrities, po politicians, money, power, or selfish pleasure, and we regularly pay homage to them. And thus we turn away from the one true God, the source of life itself. And this disintegration and division within ourselves and, and in society tends towards death. This ultimately results in outbreaks of violence and death, as we are unfortunately witnessing with the current wars raging in Europe and in other parts of the world. Wars are a symptom. They're a symptom of an underlying problem of sin, especially a lack of genuine concern for justice and charity towards all. When we refuse to listen to God, and to seek universal justice, peace, and brotherhood for all, 
when we become selfish and seek to serve our own interests and the interests of our own nation, instead of working in solidarity with others for the sake of the common good for all, then disintegration, suffering, and death are the ultimate result. Those who are just and faithful and who seek to do God's will end up suffering at the hands of the unjust. The prophets of God who tried to talk sense into God's people were persecuted and put to death. And in some respects, the situation appears hopeless for those who seek to do God's will to do what is right and just. So what then is required in order to turn things around? Is it possible to be saved from this situation of sin into which man has plunged himself? Well, Jesus says to his disciples in today's gospel reading, the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. In the midst of a faithless and perverse generation, we have this one bright, shining light in the darkness, our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one who is perfectly faithful and obedient to our Heavenly Father and to his commandments. When he suffers death and is buried, he cancels the consequences of sin and his death becomes the entryway through which his disciples can thus enter into long life. But this promise of long life is no longer a mere earthly life of temporal happiness, but a life and a happiness that lasts forever in the kingdom of heaven. Those who seek after worldly power, wealth, and pleasures, while at the same time exploiting others, may enjoy a long temporal life on this earth, but in the end, they will lose themselves. As Jesus says, what profit is there for one to gain the whole world, yet lose or forfeit himself? The path to life now only comes through our Lord Jesus Christ, through self-denial, taking up one's cross, and remaining faithful to his commandments, the greatest of which are love of God and love of neighbor. Through his cross and resurrection, Christ has set us free. The promise of long life that Moses gives to the people of Israel is now taken up in Christ. It is still true that those who obey God's commandments shall enjoy long life. Those who love Christ and choose to obey him are called upon to give their lives for the sake of Christ. As St. Paul teaches in his letter to the Romans, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. This penitential season of Lent is an opportunity for us to recommit ourselves to Christ as his disciples. Our works of penance through fasting, prayer, and almsgiving, works of charity, help us to deny ourselves, to take up our crosses, and to follow Jesus. Our fidelity to Christ is tested most especially when those around us fall away from the faith and cease to live in charity. If we persevere in following the Lord, confident in the Lord's grace and mercy, we are assured of the promise that we heard today in the responsorial Psalm, Psalm 1. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. For those who hope in the Lord and who persevere in charity, even if they should have to suffer for a time in this life, 
will enjoy the blessed assurance of the resurrection of the body and of life everlasting.